EK water cooling. You see it on very fancy open loop custom made builds, but now you might be able to see that in your PC because the AIO market is obviously much, much bigger than the open loop market because, well, leaks are a real thing, right? So it makes sense for them as a company, but does it make sense for you as a consumer? Good afternoon, morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. As I've alluded, today we're going to be doing the EKD RGB, which I think the D stands for dank, at least that's what I'm hoping it stands for, because DRGB made me think that it was DRGB, that there wasn't any RGB. And then when I saw it, there's, well, a ton of RGB. So yeah, I don't really know about that naming convention, but the product itself, I can tell you at least on the bullet point of the presentation is it performs exceptionally well, although it does look like it was put together by school week but looks aside that's objectively up to you as the consumer to decide if you like the way it looks or not let's talk about what you get in the package so when you open up the box you're going to see the radiator and the pump set in the top of the box over there there are two fans below that and then a whole bunch of mounting brackets and screws for the intel lj2000 series stuff you are going to use the existing bracket that's on the motherboard and then there are appropriate standoffs for you to put into those for your AM4 and your LJ1150 series, you are going to be using a back plate, which is exactly what I've set up over here. This is very standard though at the moment, and I've got to say the way that they executed it was quite nicely done. Segway into insulation and setup. It's actually quite rudimentary. Everything is like a bone stock standard water cooling kit for the most part, except for the fact that they spring load the actual bolts or the nuts that then attach onto the bolts that then mount the CPU cooler onto the bracket. That is really, really nice to have because it means one that you can't really over tension them because they spring loaded. So as soon as you feel it's finger tight, you're going to be good with that. And then it also prevents it from coming loose because there's constantly tension on that bolt. It means that if you are going to be moving the machine around, it's not going to suddenly rattle off and fall out in the middle of your PC somewhere. Big point, big, big, big points for that. The radiator dimensions, look, feel, and finish are very standard, 27 millimeters thick, 280 millimeters worth of surface area, and then obviously two 140 more fans. The fan housing itself doesn't have any rubberizing or anything on it. That being said, it didn't rattle because they actually run incredibly smoothly. There's absolutely no play on that bearing, so it's doing its job fantastically. The braiding on the tubes and the connections into the block and into the radiator are also extremely high quality. The impeller in the pump is also quite promising and it's had bigger tubes put in which should theoretically improve the thermal performance because there's going to be more water going across the radiator fins more often. So to test this, I'm putting up against something that it should absolutely hammer, specifically my Hyper 212 Black Edition, which is this guy over here, which is normally on the test bench. And if you've watched the channel before and seen some of the reviews, you'll have seen this guy making his way downtown, walking fast, doing all the blasts and everything basically we need. Now, normally I'll run the 9600KF, which is on here in stock RPM, and well, stock, stock RPM, stock clocks, so that I don't get any extra temperature headroom and don't really blow the doors off of what's uh, basically a 10 year old tower cooler design but today we wanted to push it to the limit so I overclocked it to 4.8 which I know brings it close to 80 degrees and it's throttling point on this cooler and then we did the tests on the other cooler as well so now you'll see what the performance results on your screen we did see quite a significant improvement it's actually more than I was suspecting when I did this with a 360 mil from another brand who I'll re re remain unnamed for their benefit it wasn't nearly as good as that. I was getting maybe a 10 to best 12% increase in performance. This puppy gave me a 20% performance increase compared to the Hyper 212. You, we're, we were always going to expect it to be better than the Hyper 212, but that varying temperature degree, that's the baseline, right? And then I'm looking at percentage gains versus other coolers. And this thing absolutely hits it with a big stick. It also does it pretty quietly as well. Getting right up in the thing's face, you'll see it was, I think about 75 decibels that we got to over there, which I literally 
took the mic of the decibel meter and put it right like into the fan. And you're obviously not going to hear anything like that when it's in a case which has its own muffling and the rest of it. Honestly, right now as it is on the test bench, all I can hear is my fridge in the kitchen, unfortunately. But this guy, in low RPM environments and like if you're just gaming or something like that, it's doing a really, really good job. And the reason that this is important to you in your current life cycle of your PC is because of Intel's Turbo Boost technology and because of AMD's extended frequency range. All of that is based off of temperature headroom. So if this is doing such a good job that in games I'm hitting 45 degrees C, what's it going to do for your single core performance? Of course, it's going to push that up. That's the whole idea here. EK, honestly, with this kit, has done an exceptionally good job performance-wise. Everything is like super easy to use, really rudimentary install. Honestly, I could probably teach my mom how to install this cooler. It was that easy. It wasn't, I didn't feel like I needed a two-person job like some of the other cooling kits and stuff I've worked with. One of the worst being <laughs> the early Antec Mercuries, where you would have the pump actually spring-loaded onto a loose back plate with prongs that would have to sit out of your motherboard. So you'd have to mount the cooler and then hold the back plate and then shove the cooler onto it and finally get that one screen. There was none of that. There was no pain. It was very, very, very easy. There's literally two prongs on either side of the cooler that it, it attaches to from the bottom like that. Then the four corners on top are spring-loaded. This is a big plus for this unit, is that spring-loaded mechanism that's in there. This is not a premium kit. They, they still do have their Elite series, which even comes with six fans, so you can have a full push-pull setup on that. But as their kind of entry into market, I think they've done an exceptionally good job. It's clear to me somebody's used it that and actually installed on with it before which is always nice because you can feel it when you get it and, and you as the user then install the product um, they did a good job with that all the mounting brackets and everything like that are top quality really easy and nice to use performance as well is exceptional the fan curve and stuff i mean even with it going to that it was still only using 60 percent of the fan even getting to that level. So there was still fan headroom and stuff. 9600K for 4.8 is not the coolest boy, as you've seen. It will use also about 140 watt. This is a 140 watt test that we're doing over here. So that's what you're gonna look at performance versus like a 140 watt kind of setup wise. 200 watts or something like that. I wish I had an X299 or something like that to test that for you, to give you a better idea. But based on this test, it's gonna do pretty damn well. Things I would like EK to change though, while the fan comes with a two to one splitter so that you can put that all into your CPU fan header, nice plus. Right now, the way that I've got the RGB hooked up is through this extender over here, because I have an extender. If I didn't, it would have been very difficult to reach that spot with them all daisy chained into each other, because out of that is a very short cable on the other end. So even with this mounted at the front of the case, it would be super difficult to get it to this point. Top or front, it's going to be really difficult to get it to this port over here. Everybody has different motherboards and everybody has their addressable RGB headers in different places. So it would have been nice for that cable to have been a bit longer. The other thing I would like them to change, honestly, is the pump head face. It is a little bit too bland. It's kind of meh when you look at it. It looks really nice in pictures and stuff. And when you get it in real life, you... Mm, it just feels like a bit lackluster. It's very plain. It's very straightforward. It doesn't jump out at me with it like, oh, look at me, I'm special. But if you're looking for something that's maybe more simplistic, then that's up to you. Once again, this is not really an objective test. It's something that you guys have to make based off of your own preference. If you're worried about the performance of the unit, EK has done an exceptional job there. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. Anyway. That's all I have for you in this review. If you have enjoyed it, please hit us up with a like and subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side.